Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to identify the first wildflower of the season, sagebrush buttercup, Ranunculus glabarimus. Now before we get into anything botanically precise, I want to point out that we already have a huge clue to identify this wildflower. Throughout most of its range, sagebrush buttercup is the first wildflower to emerge at the beginning of spring. And this guy lives in most western states, so if you're west of the continental divide and you see this cute little yellow flower that looks like this, it's almost certainly a sagebrush buttercup. They also live in relatively dry habitats, so this site is a nice little prairie, but you can also find this in sagebrush as, you know, the name kind of implies. So that was easy, but I still want to give you some more botanically precise ways to identify this wildflower. And I think the botanical precision is really useful because it helps you spot other patterns in related species. So as a bonus, I'm going to show you how this relates to the family Ranunculaceae, the buttercup family, and the genus Ranunculus. Now, a helpful first step when identifying wildflowers is to identify the main parts of the flowers, your petals, pistils, and stamens. And in a lot of intro botany books, you might see a diagram like this. And immediately we kind of run into a problem because this flower doesn't really look like that. Where are the pistils? I see stamens, but nothing really looks like the pistil in this diagram. And I was personally confused because species across the family Ranunculaceae have a ton of pistils and a ton of stamens. So each of those green little nubs you see in the center of the flower, each of those are pistils. And as a reminder, the pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower, so each of these is actually going to mature into a seed later in the season. So seeing like a million pistils and stamens gets us to the family Ranunculaceae, and next we want to narrow down to the genus Ranunculus. So perhaps the most obvious thing is that we have five showy petals, but we can also look underneath the petals and see that we have this extra layer of sepals. And this ends up being helpful because a lot of closely related genera only have sepals. If there's only one layer, they're technically sepals, even though they can be showy and nice looking just like petals would be. And then the last thing that makes this a ranunculus is that the flowers are radially symmetrical. So if I look at the top of the flower and I kind of make these pie slices, each of the individual pie slices is going to be identical. So we've given the flower a lot of attention, but we need to give the leaves some love too, because they're going to be really helpful for identifying this to a species. And besides, they're this really cool, like, dino foot-shaped leaf. If you've, seen, um, if you've seen sassafras in the east, they really remind me of those leaves. If you haven't, like, gosh, that's such a cool plant too, and you should look for it. Um, but right here we can see there are three distinct lobes that go pretty deep within each leaf. The leaves are also toward the bottom of the stem, so we call this a basal leaf arrangement. And I was surprised, when you turn the leaf over, you see the veins mainly running parallel to each other. And the scientific name, Ranunculus glabarimus, that also gives us a clue of something to look for on the leaf. The term glabrous refers to plants that are hairless, so a lot of the times you'll see scientific names like something glabra. But this isn't just glabra, this is glabarimus, the most smooth. So I'm going to give you a closer look at that in a sec. So this plant basically wilted immediately when I went back home, and I tried to rehydrate it in this jar, but all the petals fell off. But that's fine, I mainly wanted to show you the pistils and the leaves anyway. For the leaves, I was just tickled that the scientific name is really hyping up how smooth these are supposed to be. But to me, this looks about regular smooth. So I'm going to jump back to looking at the pistils. And like I said earlier, each pistil is going to mature into a seed later in the season. And this particular type of seed is called an akeen. And looking at the shape of akeens can help you identify different buttercup species, but also don't worry if you don't really want to do this. I mean, they're really small. You can see my desk was covered in these after looking at them, so even if you don't want to use this ID feature, maybe just be aware that it's something you can do. So a number of buttercup species have really strongly flattened akeens, but that's not really the case with sagebrush buttercup. These are still pretty plump, only slightly flattened. And if I look at the way the akeens are placed on the flower head, they're kind of in this dome. They're very rounded. There are several really similar looking buttercup species like mountain buttercup that have their akeens in these cone-shaped elongated heads. So if you see a rounded head, you can rule these out. Or you can go, well, it's April, so sagebrush buttercup is the only thing that's blooming right now. All right, just to sum up, if you see a ton of pistils and stamens, you're probably working with something in the family Ranunculaceae. Now to get into the genus Ranunculus, I'm looking for five petals, a layer of both petals and a layer of sepals, and I'm looking for radially symmetrical flowers. And to get to this species, sagebrush buttercup, I can first look at the leaves, which have three deep lobes and are normal amounts of glabrous. Or I can look at the flower, specifically at the akeens, 
which are only slightly flattened and are arranged in a rounded, not cone-shaped head. But probably your biggest clue to identify this species is gonna be the timing of the blooms. If it's early spring and this is the only wildflower you're seeing, it's almost certainly a sagebrush buttercup. Now it's spring, the weather is finally warming up. Get outside, go look for this wildflower. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.